My name is Keelan Purcell. I teach seventh grade science at Shaw at Garnet Patterson, and today we'll be learning about the skeletal system. So our agenda for today, we are going to take some notes on the functions of the skeletal system, because Naquan told us we're going to learn about what our skeletal system does by the end of class. You have a multiple choice quick check for today, so keep your pinch cards. I'm going over the agenda for the day. I'm doing this so that we can maximize our instructional time throughout the rest of the lesson. And then we're gonna do a two-part investigation, a chicken bone analysis, since we know we have the same types of bones as chickens now. We can look at chicken bones and analyze how our bones might function in our body. Okay, and then your exit ticket for today is going to be a stand and deliver. I want myself and the students to have an idea about what are we going to get through and how long should it take us to do each part. So we're always thinking about how can we make sure we're being on task and using our time efficiently to get to the next activity by the time we should get to it. It's time for our do now, true or false, fun facts. So remember, you don't have to know the answers to these, but I just want to see what you already think before we go into it. When you were born, you had 300 bones. Now you have 206. True or false? I'm gonna see who's picked true and who's picked false, and then I'm gonna call on at least one student who picked true and at least one student who picked false to explain their answer so they can get an idea of what they're thinking about of the skeletal system before we start. Why do you say false, uh, Anthony? Because bones can't just fall out your body. Okay, why'd you say true? Joseph? Because when you're a baby, like the bones are like in small fragments, but as you grow like, older, like the bones, they merge together and okay. like, become whole. Okay, good. So the next one. When I plan, I plan for exactly what time I should start a part of the lesson and what time I should be finished with a part of the lesson. What do you think we would look like without bones? We're gonna do a think pair share. So you're thinking. So you're gonna turn to your partner and take about 30 seconds each. Go ahead. What would you so I can adjust that as it's happening, but generally to keep us on track towards that pacing that's already on the lesson plan, I'll give them times, like two minutes to go. I also just like to let them think about, okay, now I need to be wrapping up my thoughts, or now I need to be wrapping up my conversation. All right, so we are going to get ready to share out. So please end your conversation in five, in four, in three, very nice, two, one, zero. Okay, so if I call on So I usually use a countdown to get students from when they're talking to each other back to listening. So in 20 seconds, let's get ready to vote. Finish up that thought. I also give them time prompts like for an activity, even if it's a longer time prompt, like you have 10 minutes for this, because I think it's a good skill that students should have to be able to manage their time for an activity. And I'm trying to teach them that. Okay, so we are going to move on to the chicken bone analysis part of class today. I set up the transitions in the first week and two weeks of, of class with a certain set of students and we practice them and we practice them and we practice them as an actual, sometimes we'll spend a whole lesson on what are our routines and what are our transitions and let's master them. So some expectations, which I, you guys always do an excellent job with partner work, but please share the materials. Share your ideas. So like when we are moving into partners today, we've practiced that a lot and we've practiced it until we got it right. So I guess just through practice at the beginning of setting up those routines and procedures is how they run smoothly throughout the rest of the year. So your partners are actually right next to you for today. When I say go, turn your desk to face each other, I will bring around the chicken bones and a uh, piece of paper towel for you to dump them on and start sorting them. So I'm not actually gonna tell you what a short- Each person is responsible for something that's keeping the group going and on task towards meeting the activity goal. Well, what do you think the function of flat bones is first? To protect us. Okay, to protect us, what else do you think? To help us get muscle. Okay, so what is that helping to do? When students are working in groups of more than two, they are each given a group role, so there's a leader of the group, there's a materials manager, there's a recorder, and there's a timekeeper. And this helps them to maximize their time. All right, 10 seconds, line up, go ahead. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay, ladies out to the right and stop at the door, please. I love being a teacher, it's great. 
Lawan, what do you think? I think they are for like the legs or the arms. I love the moments when students really get it and especially like students that might struggle in other subjects. That's why I love teaching science because it's just a place where all different types of learners can be successful.